In nature, distressed baitfish kick, flicker, and then slowly fade away. Unless bigger fish get there first, of course. There's something remarkable about the final, futile struggles of wounded forage fish that bring out the predatory nature of game fish, especially brutal largemouth bass, which take no prisoners when their prey is vulnerable to attack. A lure that mimics this fade to black can turn the last few seconds of life into a lifetime of fishing memories. That's where Rapala's shadow wrap concept comes into play. Because when you cast a shadow upon the waters, it's lights out for bass. I got it out, finally. Talk about sticky hooks. We're not kidding, when you pick up one of these things. Dropping so slow. Got him. Feels a little bit better, and it's a nice bass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a little nice bass, bud. I like that. I like that. Still liking the jump. <laughs> Got him. And your hands aren't numb yet, Al? Not quite numb yet, nope. Nope. She slapped. I thought she slapped at this. I, I had a slap earlier. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, you know, and then I backed away from her. And I let it sit there again. She sunk a little bit. And nice fish. Look at that one, huh? Ooh, I love it. Cold water, largemouth bass fishing. One of my favorite times of the year to catch these babies. And my two favorite baits. Ooh, let me get it are a jig and a jerk bait. And you can load them up with fish like this. Whew. They're fighting a little slow, but they are still fighting. Hey, I'm fishing with a longtime friend of mine, Mark Fisher. To those of us in the sport fishing industry, we all nicknamed them Fish. Now Mark has got a really unique job. A job a whole lot of us wish we had. He designs baits. He does baits for Rapala, Storm, VMC. I bet you that you have a lure in your tackle box that he was probably influential in developing. He gets to test these baits all over the country, actually all over the world, fishing with really good fishermen and really good water. How would you like to have a job like that? Mark, you want to trade jobs with me? I don't know if I could trade with you all the way, Al, but there are days in the office where you got to wear long pants that I wish I was out here with you. This is a new bait from Rapala, and it's, good. it's called the Shadow Wrap. And this thing does things that I've never seen any other jerk bait do as far as, as, far as triggering fish to bite it. Take a look at this. Just watch this action once. What triggers fish into biting? Is it color? Shape? What about sound and vibration? Or maybe a combination of all of these? Hey, what about action? I think this is one of the biggest determining factors that triggers a fish into seeing a bait and then making a commitment to strike it. The Rapala Shadow Wrap has taken the word action to a whole new level. Here's the idea behind the bait. Make a lure that's imitating a dying minnow's last kicks of life, giving a fish a simple meal. For the most part, fish are generally in a neutral mood, so having a bait that can turn a neutral fish positive is a real game changer. Right on the suspense, whatever it is. What color? Green large, looks like a large mouth. Nice yeah. large mouth, nice one. Oh, there you go. Ooh. Nice fish. There we go. Boy, the old color of the bait matches the LMB, Al. Yeah. You know that thing's been eaten on. Look how she's been. Look at how beat up she is on the backside. Oh yeah. Something was messing with her. In the grasp. Yeah. Just a nice fish. Yeah. 
He hit right here. All sizes, baby, all sizes. They got us. You got to start someplace. It's a good sign. I'm telling you, Mark, the hooks that you guys put in on these on this series of, of baits, they're like needles, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the shadow wrap, we wait, basically went down a wire size on the hook to make it so when those fish want to come up and they're negative and they just want to nip at the bait, if you can feel them, you can stick them. You know, instead of having to drive a big railroad spike through a non-aggressive fish. I mean, they are virtually, yeah. they're, they're re really sticky, man. They're they real scare sticky. Me. Scary they scare sticky. Me. You gotta ease back through there. Again, I like coming sure. on that angle. I'm not gonna reverse back. I'd rather come back with the troll that way. Uh. The day's right, though. Yep. It's nice that Jimmy lent me his boat. Yeah, he's got the double talons and everything. I'm get, this is Jimmy's boat, and I'm getting used to it because I'm taking it to Arizona with me this winter. <laughs> so I'm getting a feel. I sold my, my big Lund. I sold, and I get a new boat in spring. But this is great. To, You'll yeah, like you know, the double is, talons in the back. Yeah. You'll be able just spot locked down. Yeah, and that water down there is a lot of talon water. Sure. You know, I'll, I'll be there for the, the smallmouth spawning bite and the pre-spawn largemouth. So there's going to be a lot of taloning going on. That'll be good. What do you think of these new hummingbirds? I on these on? Look, I'm, the detail is really quite incredible. I know you're a hummingbird guy. Yeah, absolutely, all, all right. the way. The onyx is really gives you some really great resolution. And it does stuff, you know, you know it's in incredible the things you can do, can do yep. with this unit. Yeah. Now, what is your favorite feature on hummingbirds that you use a lot? You know, I like to be able to do the split screen. You know, I'm still kind of a die in the wall stuck with just a simple unit for sonar and run the other one where I can split screen to go to uh, side imaging and come back and go to mapping. Those are the features oh, you use the most? I, the most and really what I really found out this year I used a lot fishing a lot more bigger water was that I could I could zoom in and have my map for just basically actual tight running but I have my long distance where I just set her way back in the background and I could actually plot and navigate my course through it a lot better, you know, instead of jumping back, zooming in and out and in and out. All right, back at it. You know what's really funny with coming out with the new bait? Uh, you put all the, all the powers to be in the office together, try to figure out, okay, what are we going to do? Sell more shallows, more deeps? Are we going to be 40 60 or 60 40? And really, jerkbait fishing has become a big player in smallmouth fishing, largemouth fishing, but it's just not for the spring of the year anymore. You know, whereas it used to be, well, I got to get a good jerkbait for those boys down south, you know, for the time of year when jerkbaits are, are hot down in the Ozarks or whatever. But now with smallmouth fishing all year round and, and anglers gravitating to smallies, you got one tied on all year long and it just doesn't come out of the boat. Once in a while they get on these rocks on this little pointer, pretty darn good. Hmm. Just extends offshore back there? Yeah. Because you got the, it, 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 the breaks all the way across. It drops a little between here and there, but it's rock. It's rock. You you take a DT and crank this, this edge going in, and there's rock on it. Wow. Usually, this flat from this corner, that flat gets some big ones on it. But so does this corner. look like a reasonable it is a good <laughs> way to call him out tell me what i got on my line buddy <laughs> oh right there right there close to the boat. i almost seen her hit it whoa i almost seen her go bam oh right there right there close to the boat. i almost seen her hit it whoa i almost seen her go bam <laughs> perfect that cold water, 50 degree water, got her a little bit numb, Mark. Yeah, <laughs> senses are a little off. Yeah. You know, where, where, where a bait like this really, really shines for largemouth is that cool to cold water time. 
in spring and in fall. That's where this bait really, really comes into, into play, those cool, cold water transitions. You know, we're in 50 degrees now, and uh, up on these northern lakes that I fish a lot, I've caught largemouth like this jerking in water in the high 30s. And I mean, you're dead sticking a long, long, long time with it. And another key thing where it really works is you want the water to be clear, you know, stain to clear, if the, which usually happens if the water's getting cool. But you want to try to avoid as much as possible the real dark water environments jerking like this doesn't quite work as well in those kind of baits where you need something like a spinner bait, something that makes a noise or a crankbait pound in the bottom like a DT6, something like this to get the fish's attention or dragging a jig or a football head. So clear water, cold water is probably the, the best of the best of the best for what we're doing. Boy, that bait sat there a long time, Mark. You know, that's one of the interesting things about the cold water period, as you were saying, Al, is that oftentimes just a lack of act or motion by the angler still keeps that bait in play. And I think oftentimes we just get a little apprehensive and we want to move along a little bit and move along too fast thinking it's like summer, but really the longer that bait is sit, sitting, working through the suspension characteristics, the better off it is. Boy, one of the things I noticed with the shadow is these flat side, it's a flat sided bait. This is really unique. And when you see it underwater, there's so much flash and you barely have to move the rod to fish this bait. It might sound funny, but you can almost fish it in place. And you can make the bait with the right slack line and the right feel, and you see what it's doing? You can make that bait do a 180 and keep it in cold water like this, and the colder it gets, the smaller that strike zone is going to be. So you don't want to fish it away from those fish. It takes a little while. That fish isn't charging like he is in 65 degree water, charging out of the weeds or off the bottom to hit a bait. You know, they're swimming real slow. They're coming up, they're looking at the bait, and they're just going, <clears throat> and they're so, I mean, you've got to really fish it slow. Yeah. You know, it was one of the interesting things, as you pointed out, Al, is, is, is how flat-sided baits actually work with absence of motion sometimes, with that slight little, I gotta be careful. Ooh, this is a good one. You know, Al, with the comment you made about a flat-sided bait, in the absence of motion, you know, we've learned a lot about, about anglers in other parts of the world, and it's kind of interesting. People like in Europe have fished the same rock, the same piece of structure for hundreds of years, and some families just keep going to this rock time and time again, and you watch how they're masters of just moving and twitching a bait. And flat-sided baits, we've learned so much about their movements and lack thereof, makes really cold water situations, these baits really, really excel. Mark, what makes the shadow wrap so much different than all of the other minnow baits that we have in a, the wrap of a line? You know, it's interesting, Al, when you, when you work on projects about lures, you want to be careful not to cannibalize existing family members. And certainly, in the lineup, you look at a, at a jerk bait as a category, there's a lot of jerk baits that are ovals or modified ovals, real round bodies, and they roll easy. They don't flash like a flat-sided bait. So characteristically, the shadow wrap, being a flat-sided bait, flashes with the least amount of, of movement and action. And actually what ends up happening, um, the shadow wrap for cold water situations, instead of being a, what I would call like a striding bait, which is a conventional jerk bait, you stroll past your target, you ease it up to it, it can only move by so far, and then it has to suspend, slow sink or slow rise, where the shadow wrap, you can, with, with barely any movement to the rod at all, or picking up slack line, you can get the bait to move left to right, left to right, and as you say with another fish, Al, get that bait to turn and do a 180. It's that, it's that responsive, I guess that is what the word I'm looking for. I think I got a big one here. I think I got a nice bass here. <laughs> Just, I, I was sorry to interrupt. I didn't want to say anything. That's okay. But uh, you were going so good, but I got a real good one here. <laughs> Come here, baby. You want to jump one more time? You were pulling like a horse. And now you... Oh, it's a nice one. That's a nice fat so though. That's Way the other thing about this time of the year in our natural lakes up here. In the lakes that we fish, well, it's actually true all over the country. The fall 
is my favorite, favorite time. And in lots of bodies of water in fall, north, south, east, and west, that jerkbait comes into play. You know, we're talking, right now, we're talking about the shadow wrapping, and we're fishing largemouth bass with it on the lake that we're on. I was out, well, it was four days ago, and I fished three different lakes in three different day, days. And I were smallmouth fishing. The smallmouth on the, you can't believe it. I mean, they, they love this thing. We were pounding fish up to about five and a half, five and three quarters pounds. And there, it, it's an amazing bait, especially in the cold water period for largemouth and smallmouth. I don't know too much about spotted bass, but I know enough to be able to say they're gonna eat it. They're gonna work <laughs> it over. I read some pretty good sized fish down deep. There's one. Yep. Yeah. Oh. I thought she was better than that, Mark. But we'll take her. Yep. Yeah. Oh. I thought she was better than that, Mark. But we'll take her. Yeah. We'll take her. Sturdy fish, Al. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We'll take her. They don't. They don't got that oomph that they do when they're in 75 degree water. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> a little off. Just a little. I got, I got her. I got her. You know, you might be wondering why I'm throwing a spinning rod and Mark is throwing a bait casting rod. Well, let me talk a little bit about rods and reels. All of us here at the edge, most of the time, fish sm smoke rod and reel combinations. And uh, they come out with a few new wrinkles this year that are really neat. Let me show them to you. Most of the time we use quantum smoke rods and reels, both in spinning and bait casting. They got all the actions we need. The smoke PTs have a few new wrinkles that are really interesting. Have you ever picked up one of your rods and forgot what pound test was on there? Well, not anymore. Both spinning and bait casting have a line weight indicator. This is super slick. In this case, we have the dial set on 10 pound test. They have updated all the smoke rods with braid ready guide frames. What does that mean? How about this? It helps eliminate wind knots and tangles that come from braid fishing. And the rods are lighter and more durable than ever. Feels like a good one, Mark. The bass. And a boy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you see, this is all I can do to, to, to break water, man. <laughs> man, you guys are putting pressure on me. He wants to get out of the water, Al, but he <laughs> just doesn't have it in him. He had a good attitude. He's trying. He's definitely trying. There. Oh, man. Man, oh, man, oh, man. <laughs> Careful. Those tr troubles I, crossed all over his I mouth, every way but loose. I can see what's going through your mind. But you know, when it comes to cold water finicky biters, you need those sharp, 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 sticky hooks. I got it out, finally. Talk about sticky hooks. We're not kidding. When do you pick up one of these things? You know, every year in a bass fishing world, somebody comes up with a series of the new hot baits something that's new that everybody's got to have in their tackle box to catch bass like this. Well, one of those baits this year, it's the shadow wrap. And you got to get some of them in your box. It's the closest thing to magic in a jerk bait that I've seen in a long, long time. In 2003, my brother Ron and I wrote a book titled first light on the water. And uh, it's a story of our faith and uh, a whole lot of things that have happened in our business relationships and uh, uh, how our stand on God's word all worked out in the end. And it was a, a very successful title. And it's been sold out for some time now. And recently, uh, the folks from Harvest House contacted Ron and I to do an updated version on First Light. And we're working on that right now. A lot of it will be uh, parts of what was in this book, but we're adding a bunch of new chapters to it. 
and I just completed one of the chapters, and it's titled, There's No Atheists in a Foxhole. And it's my story of my first experience in Vietnam when I got under fire. I was in country, a 20-year-old kid. First time I'm in country, we were in just a short period of time, and it was the first time that I experienced a mortar attack. And I jump into a, a part-finished bunker. I, I mean, it, we didn't have four or five sandbags layered uh, on it, and just me and one other guy, two of us in there. He's a Marine. And uh, he's in one corner and I'm in the other corner. And I hear him, all of a sudden he's looking up into the sky and he's cursing God. And, and he's saying things, now I don't have much faith or a belief in anything about the Lord to any extent at this period of time in my life. But this was the first time that I cried out from my heart and know that I called out to God for help and meant it. I was 20 years old and I said, Lord, I, don't, I got nothing to do with this guy. I don't want to be here. You bring something down on him. I don't want to be a victim of circumstances. <laughs> Forgive me, I don't want to be in this mess. A series of, a very simple prayer, but you know what? It was meant from my heart and it was the first time that I consciously know that I asked God for help. I came to him with a prayer of meaning from my heart and it worked and thank God for that. I had to share that with you. I get into a little more detail in that chapter in the book. Hey, from all of us here at the edge, you have a good safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets.